Manage Returns, and Enter Vendor Credits. In MaxTrax, you can track every part purchased as a stocked item or reserved for a particular job. If a part bought for a particular job is not used, we can track its way back to the part supplier for credit. Let's take a look. As soon as I know a part is not going to be used for a job, I create a parts order to track the return process. Click the Order Parts icon on the toolbar and click the Create New Parts Order button in the lower left corner. Select the vendor the parts will be returned to and here we click the Add Line Item button and choose to return item to vendor for credit from the drop list. Now we have to have a quantity available to return to the vendor. If the quantity is zero, but you know you have this part at the shop to go back to the vendor, say the customer decided not to do the work, oftentimes the part is still sitting on that repair order. Delete that part number from the RO and it will then be available to return. Enter your quantity to be returned to the vendor. The cost should be the last cost you paid from this vendor and click OK or click Add Another if you have another return going back to the same vendor. Once all the parts to be returned to this vendor are listed, click OK Save and I always choose to save and print this open PO. And let's take a look at how that prints out. I take the purchase order printout for this return and tape it to the box of parts I'm returning and then I put that box of parts in that vendor's return slot in my parts room. My parts drivers know to check for returns and they sign and date on this authorization line and then put this form into my in basket. This way I know by who and when my parts were picked up for return instead of just relying on those little slips of paper that they handwrite picked up returns on that I can never read. And then I wait. I could have a bunch of open returns I'm waiting for credit memos from the vendor listed on this parts order screen. These open parts orders that are negative amounts remind me to check with my vendor to make sure they get me my credit back. I do the same for tracking used cores and the occasional sublet labor credit as well. As the end of the month approaches, I'll call the vendors for these open credits, remind them that I sent back some returns, and I'm waiting on paperwork for those credits. I also let them know that I would like those credits processed before my statement is generated. When you do receive the paper credit memo from the vendor, highlight the parts order and click the green check mark button up here to convert selected parts order into a receive vendor, in this case, credit. Enter the target amount as a negative since this is a credit memo and click OK. If the vendor is charging you a restock fee on the part, we recommend that you return the part to your system for the full amount that you paid for it rather than reducing the cost you paid for the part to keep your inventory valuation correct. Then enter the restock fee in the handling field below. This field by default is dispersed to an expense account called Shipping Other. However, if you are going to be charged restocking fees on a regular basis and are not using this handling field for another shipping expense, I would recommend setting up the default account posting for this field to an expense account specifically for restock fees. Please see the training video on Edit or Add a Default Account Posting. Change the date if needed both the invoice and the receive dates to match the vendor credit. Click the OK Save button and select Update Inventory and Post to AP. And MaxTrax will prompt you to enter the credit memo number here. If you are on COD with that vendor and they sent you a check, use the same process. But after you have posted the credit memo to Accounts Payable, let's close and go to that vendor record. Click Vendors on the menu bar. 
select Accounts Payable Vendor List, enter the beginning of the vendor name, and hit the Enter key to open their record. Notice there is a balance in the Total Credits field here on the right. Click the yellow Options button on the left, and from the drop list, select Receive AP Credit Refund. You should see the credit memo listed and the amount. Click in the Use column on the left, and a green check mark should appear. Then click the OK button down here. Select a method of payment the vendor used to give you your refund, and click OK. That amount will now show up in your daily sales activity and the payment, let's say it was a check, will be in the Undeposited Funds section waiting for you to deposit that check in your next bank deposit. And this concludes the lesson on Manage Returns and Enter Vendor Credits.